Hello friends, we are coming together again in order to begin a new class and we continue with our lesson poverty and how it is a challenge to a nation that is aspiring to grow into a developed country. So this poverty is pulling us back. When we try to progress, the poverty is pulling us back again. And therefore, it, the first priority of the government is to find out measures that will help us to overcome this poverty and develop into a developed nation. That is what we see. So we shall see what are the measures, anti-poverty measures that government has taken. So we can take your textbook, page number 38, 38, and we'll see the topic, anti-poverty measures. And we know removal of poverty has been one of the major objectives of the Indian developmental strategy. So from the time of independence or even from before, we saw the different reasons why India became poor because of the British uh, wrong policies and uh, lack of initiatives to uh, give job to the people or to start industry and so on. So as after getting independence, the priority of the Indian government was to set up the to set up the uh, anti-poverty measures that was the uh, priority of the government in order to help the people in order to help the people to achieve development that was their priority and government has started so many anti-poverty strategy and it is based on two plans the policies that government take the measures that government take it is based on two policies let us see uh, two planks let us see what are they what are these two policies two planks on which the government decisions are uh, taken one is promotion of economic growth so what is the first one government want to promote the economic growth and then targeted anti-poverty programs then government will in, uh, institute or introduce some anti-poverty programs to the targeted group not for all but mainly for the poor people especially those who are suffering from very uh, severe poverty it is to help them government will introduce some special program so economic development is meant for all and People who are very, very poor, they will be given some special programs in order to come up in their life. That is what government is planning. And over a period of 30 years, lasting up to the early 80s, so after the independence uh, for the 30 years, that means from 1947 to the um, 80s, early 80s, 1980s government uh, realized that there was very little growth government was trying and trying and introducing so many programs one after another but the progress was very very slow and the poverty was not much reduced the poverty continued to be very high the reason one reason we said that the birth rate was very high therefore the people were not able to overcome the poverty the little income that they have or even the help that government gave that all became <clears throat> unimportant because more and more people are born the population was increasing very rapidly and over a period of we can say uh, official poverty estimates According to the official report, the poverty estimate which were about 45% in 1950s. 
that means just after the independence the poverty uh, ratio in india was 45 percent that means almost half of the population was under poverty and it remained the same even in the early 80s so even after 30 years that means after 1980 also that level continued to remain 45 percentage of the people were still under poverty that means there was no much improvement and Since the 80s, so after 80s, till 80 or till 1980, there was no much improvement. But after 1980s, there was a lot of improvement. Let us see what improvement took place. India's economic growth has been one of the fastest in the world. So after that 30 years of hard work and government was laying the foundation for the growth of this uh, economy it became it is began to grow very fast and it became one of the fastest growing economies in the world and the growth rate jumped from an average of 3.5 percent a year in the 1970s to about 6 percent during the 80s and 90s so till 1980s the growth rate of India was 3.5%. That was the growth rate, very low rate. But in 1980 and 1990, it became how many percent? It became 6%. Almost it became double. So 3.5 became 6%. So the growth rate of India was very, very high. And the higher growth rate have helped the uh, significantly in the reduction of property. So when that growth rate is growing higher, people will become rich, more and more people will get job and people will get good food and the death rate will be less. And so the poverty became low. Even the poor people, their standard of life increase a little more they have little more money in their hand they are able to have a little food more food or uh, nutritious food and so on so poverty was reduced a little bit because of the growth rate and therefore it is becoming clear that <clears throat> there is a strong link between economic growth and poverty reduction so from the example of india itself we can say that economic development and poverty reduction are interlinked they are connected together so where there is economic growth poverty will be less where there is less economic growth poverty will be more so that one we learn from the example of india itself that when the power when the economic growth rate became 3.5 to 6 the poverty was reduced before poverty was very high so that is a connected things so you can underline in your textbook that the growth rate economic growth rate implies or well, there's a strong link between connection between economic growth rate and poverty reduction and economic growth widens opportunities and provides the resources needed to invest in human development so the economic development uh, increase the people become richer they get more job they get more money and then that money should be invested in human development human development what is a human development that is to develop a human beings by providing good food nutritious food by providing education and providing other facilities like health facility medical facility all these things should be provided so the economic growth should make the people better live better in better conditions and better human beings more educated more healthy and so on that way the entire population will be healthy and will be able to carry out more and more activities in their life and will lead to greater economic development and this also encourages people to send their children including the girl child to schools 
in the hope of getting better economic returns from investing in education. So in olden times, what the people were doing was uh, sending all the children to the field. The parents will be working in the field and the children also will be working in the field and they never bothered to send the children to school. They never want the children to waste their time. They think if the children also come and work with us in the family or in the farm and we'll have little more income in the family. That is what they calculated. But as the economic growth increased, the people became a little more richer. Then they began to think people who go to the school, people who get the education, they are better in life. So the money that they spend the years that children spend in the school, it is not a waste, it is investing. And in the future, we will get more returns. They will get job and they will bring back a lot of salary, income to the family and there will be more development. So people began to think only that. And especially the girl child. In India, the mentality of the parents is that the girl child is not meant for us. They will get married and they will go to in the husband's house. So what is the use of educating the girl? Only you know, to educate the boy. They will stay with us. They will help the family and so on. So that kind of mentality was there in the mind of the people of India. But as the economic development came, people began to think differently. That even a girl child can become an asset to the family. Even she also can bring economic development into the family. So they were not just thinking about what will happen to the girl child after their marriage, but they were able to think about uh, everyone as their child. They are able to invest in the children, including girl child, so that they will get education, they will get job, and they will get more income, and their life will be more stable. So they were able to understand that. And the poor may not be able to take direct advantage from the opportunities created from the opportunities by economic growth. So there are some people who are still poor and they may not be able to get much advantage from this uh, economic development because they do not have job, they are still remaining poor and they do not have the um, facilities. So. Certain people who got job, education, they improved in their financial condition. But those poor people, they are still suffering. So what happened to those people? So that is what we said. Those people, they were completely uh, dependent on the agriculture. So they are not getting the benefits of the modern methods of cultivation. They are not able to use fertilizers. They are not able to use pesticides, fertilizers, or good seeds, and so on. They just go on with their traditional way of cultivation, and that makes them uh, remain poor and poor. And therefore, the government came forward in order to help them. In these circumstances, they need an extra help, an extra push, in order to come out from that uh, severe poverty and to use better methods of cultivation and improve their income. That is what government trying to do. So that is what we said. Government is trying to promote um, based on two planks. One is economic growth. Another one is anti-targeted poverty program. Anti-poverty program. Targeted anti-poverty programs. That is what government is doing. So let us see how this uh, government is targeting these very poor farmers in the rural areas. How government is trying to help them. That is what we are going to see next. So as the uh, poor people, they were in the real uh, sit poverty situation, there is a need for <coughs> targeted anti-poverty programs. The government realized that we need to do something for these people in order to help them. That is what we are going to see. What did government do in order to help these people? And although there are so many schemes which are formulated to affect poverty directly or indirectly, some of them are worth mentioning. 
so government did so many programs for certain sections of the society the poor sections of the society and we are not going to study all that works that government has done but certain important things certain anti poverty programs that is what we are going to do uh, one is very famous in our areas we might have heard about uh, mahatma gandhi uh, rural employment guarantee act so there were two acts one is rural national rural uh, employment guarantee act we call it nre ga another one is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act in 2005 it was introduced and what is the target of this people or this program so during this program the government wants to give 100 days of wage employment to every household to ensure livelihood security in rural areas so this program of the government which is called mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act that is meant for people who are living in the rural areas in order to get 100 days of wage employment so government will call these poor people from the village you come and work in a year you can work for 100 days and we will give you wage so that way those people will have some money in their hand otherwise they go on working whole year in their own farm and the production is very less and they have no money at all in their hand so here at least they can come out in a year 100 days the days means more than 3 months the rest of the months they can work in their field so this 100 days they can come out work for the government they have to do the work what government is telling and government will give them wage so they will have some money in their hand so that way those people who people will be able to come up in their life and this program also it was at a sustainable development to address the cause of drought deforestation and soil erosion the government also wanted to um, make the people aware about the problems that people are facing that is there is uh, a sustainable development is needed so in the name in the in the name of development we cannot go and do whatever we want we have to carry out our development in a sustainable way it should continue for many years not for 5 years we develop and then we finish up all the development that is not the case it should sustain go on so for that the the drought why there is drought or why there is deforestation or why there is soil erosion all these people uh, the poor people in the village they are not aware about so it is the duty and the responsibility of the government to make them aware about what will happen to deforestation if you do if you cut down the trees what will happen it will lead to soil erosion it will cause drought or it will destroy the uh, quality of the soil and there will be soil erosion all these problems will be there people are not aware about it so they want money so they will cut the forest and sell it or they will cut the forest and make firewood so that is a development but it is not sustainable development after few months or years the forest will be completely over afterwards what will do there is no more chance for development therefore the activity that we do in the name of development it should not just finish up the opportunity for the future for development but it should go on so the resources that we use in our daily life it should not prevent us from developing and continuing the development in the future it should go on then one third of the proposed jobs have been reserved for women so we said this 100 days of job is given to the rural family and then government makes it compulsory not every day men can come for work so one third is meant for women that means 100 days are there so 
63 or 66 or 67 days men can work the rest 33 days women has to work so it is a way to encourage the women in the rural area to come and work and get the wages otherwise always their husband will be working and always the money will be with the husband the wife will continue to remain poor and she will continue to clean only the house and so on so giving an opportunity for the women as well to come out and work and get money for themselves so that they also can meet their needs they also can feel proud that i am also working i also have got money that will help them to come up with a self uh, self esteem they will be able to uh, stand in the society as an important person and then the scheme provided employment to 220 crores of people and the days of employment to 4.78 crore households so because of this program of the government 220 crore days of work was done so including all the people came for work total number of work was 220 crores that means you can imagine so much of uh, labor wage was paid to the people and they were able to get some development and total uh, people of uh, people came from the houses is 4.78 crore 4.78 crore household you can underline all this data how many people benefited how many households benefited and so on so 220 crore work days of work was there and 4.78 crores of the households were benefited from this work program of the government and the share of sc st and women personal days in the scheme are 23 percent 17 percent days and 53 percent days so who are the people who came for work so 23 percentage of scheduled cars came then 17 percentage of scheduled drive came and 53 percentage of women also came so it was a very good response from the people in order to benefit from this scheme called Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. Many people came forward to benefit from it and they got the economic benefit and we can surely say their life might have been improved a little better than the old ways, olden days. And the average wage has increased from 65 in 2006 to 7 so the wage that government pays them per day is 65 but in 2013-14 this program the wage was increased it was double it became 132 so when they started the wage was 65 rupees but now in 2013-14 the wage was has been increased to 132 rupees so that way the government has being able to help the people these poor people to come up in their life and live a better life and so on so let us wind up for today and the next class we shall see another program that the government introduced in order to help these poor people to uplift their financial conditions and so on so thank you for listening have a nice day bye